It's a cold, drizzly, foggy morning in Southern California, right here at Surfside, California to be exact, but the fishing is anything but cold. It's still red hot. I've got all of that and so much more this morning on The Morning Briefing. Good morning, everybody. I can hear all kinds of fog horns going off here this morning. It's great to have you with us, but it is a different day. There's no question about it. Foggy, drizzly, kind of cold out. So this will all burn off, I'm sure, here shortly. And we'll be back to some hot weather and some hot fishing because we've really got a lot of that going on right now. First of all, before we get into what's going on south of the border in San Diego, here in the LA Orange County area, up in the Channel Islands, and even down in Puerto Vallarta, There's so much to talk to you about. First of all, your thoughts and prayers for Captain Eddie Leland. Thank you so much for doing that. We deeply appreciate it. Another captain, Tommy Holland. He's had some health issues here recently. Keep Tommy in your thoughts and prayers. Good guy who provides so much information to us for Albacore and so much more. So keep him in your thoughts and prayers. And I want to go back to a few weeks ago when I was taking that afternoon walk here in Surfside. I found a deceased male on the beach. He was 32 years old. His name was Mustafa Osama Jamil. And yesterday I spent about a half an hour on the phone with his cousin. And man, that made it so real to me. Listening to his cousin explain how they traveled together, their birthdays were only five days apart. They were like brothers. He loved him so much and he was reaching out to me just trying to get some answers. And I gotta tell you, what a nice, nice young man he was. And as I said, that made it so real to me. That along with a note that I got on our YouTube channel in the comments section from his sister-in-law, thanking me for bringing closure to them. Um, it, It just made it more and more real. Such a sad, sad day here in Surfside when that happened, but I really started to feel it talking to these really lovely people. He was calling from the United Arab Emirates. And once again, um, Mustafa was of Egyptian descent. Um, But you know what? We're all in this big world together. And I could really feel that as I spent that amount of time with him yesterday. But anyway, I just want to let you know about that. All right. Relentless going October the 29th. We're almost full. I think we have two spots available. It's a day and a half trip. 450 bucks includes your meals. Going to be a lot of fun leaving on a Saturday night, returning on a Monday morning early. If you want to get information on that, shoot me a text 657-227-6459. And also, We have that Name the Boat contest down there in Puerto Vallarta. My good friend Ricky Carball will be running a brand new boat. He's not going to be running it, actually. Jay Cruz, many of you know Jay. He's got so much experience down there in Puerto Vallarta. He knows it like the back of his hand. He'll catch you those giant, big yellowfin tuna down there. That's going to be great. There's the boat. We need a name for it. You get the name right. Ricky Carball, the new owner, says, He'll ship you all kinds of swag, and hopefully we'll get a name here in the next few days. We'll be watching that really, really closely for you. That's going to be a lot of fun fishing that boat. I'll be down in Puerto Vallarta doing just that. Remember, if you'd like to get on a list when Ricky gets ready to take reservations, give him a call. His number is 801-913-9619. All right, great live show last night at 22nd Street Landing in San Pedro, California. We had a little bit of everything. Of course, we talked about the current bite that was going on, but perhaps the best part of the show was having Jen Amalfitano, and that is Anthony's wife. Anthony's a huge part of the Friedman Adventures family. He spent the afternoon yesterday redecorating our set, put a big Dorado up there, did a great job, but his wife came on and did a whole thing on ceviche. And I got to tell you, that was to die for. We got to dine on it. I was just wishing that all of you who watched the live show could have been there to sample it. It was great. We sent some up to the front office. Tony and Janelle, who do such great work at 22nd Street, were able to enjoy it also. 
and so did all of us there in the studio. It was great. And of course, Chef Jason was there to elaborate on her recipe and add some other advice in terms of making ceviche. Man, that is one of the greatest dishes in the world, especially if you're counting calories or you're you know, on a keto thing like me. It's perfect. Ceviche is not only delicious, especially when you have fresh fish, but it's good for you. And how many dishes around here can we say that about with all the fast food and everything else? All right, let me get you south of the border. And I got to tell you that a guy by the name of Victor from Blackfin down there in Ensenada. Now, my dear friend Albert Ponce fishes with him all the time. Victor jumped on last night. He was watching live from Ensenada, and we're getting ready to go down there and make a trip. We were talking about doing it this week, and that still might happen. I just don't want to do a really rushed job. And if we go on Thursday, we're going to have to leave in the afternoon, fish Friday, and be back here Friday night. I mean, we can do it, but I'd rather spend some time. I'm really in need of a Mexico trip. I miss it. I need to get down there, and I'd love to go down there and fish with Victor out of Blackfin. Albert recommends it. His wife, Crystal, recommends it. That is good enough for me. So Victor was so kind as to extend an invitation to us. I'll make a decision today, and if we go down there, you better believe we're going to have a video for all of you. We're going to have some ceviche, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So now I'm starting to lean toward going. i just talking about crossing the border and thinking about spending time in Mexico. Maybe we'll even stop by Playa Saldamondo. I'll talk to George and see if we can't catch some surfish, but we're really going to have to jam it in. We'll see. Maybe we'll postpone to next week. I'll let you know. South of the border with Victor, Blackfin, and the rest of the guys down there in the Pongas and other, you know, bigger boats also. They're doing really well down there. Kelps are holding Dorado. There's a lot of yellowfin tuna moving into the area. We continue to see better and better YFT fishing. It's been breezy. That's been a little bit of a problem down there in that neck of the woods. But most of the guys are able to get out and make a catch. There's a few marlin around. It's really still game on down there in northern Baja, California. And it just seems to want to go on and on and on. And this wind is so uncharacteristic for this time of year. We should not have wind in our fall. This is the time when we have our best weather months. Just replay what I tell you all year long, and then you can take it and throw it in the trash because that's not what's happening right now. You got to think that this is an abnormal blow. We'll get through it, and at some point, we're going to have that glassy, calm, gorgeous Baja weather, and that's going to greet all you anglers with even more Dorado and more tropical stuff. It just looks really, really good. Blackfin, Ensenada, give them a try. We also, Arnie Man down there. We love Arnie. He's always eating his palomitas and watching our show, his popcorn. And also my good friend, Diego Nuno, who's a deckhand on the Royal Star, Costa Baja Sport Fishing. Three great references for you. We'll give Blackfin a try. I can't wait. I know it's going to be great. Um, once again, Albert, he tells me something. I take it to the bank. Confia and Albert. Trust them 100%. So can't wait to do that. All right, let's jump into Gringolandia up here in the USA. And in San Diego, they're pounding out some really good catches in some uncomfortable weather. It's not the best weather that they've had all season long. It's blowing. It's kind of snotty. And they're still catching. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that we are still in the midst of that. In fact, Mimi Pham, a really good friend of mine, girlfriend of Sean Hardigan, who runs the Mission Bell, was just out. And Mimi said, Phil, there is so much life out there. I mean, there's bluefin tuna, there's yellowfin tuna, there's Dorado. She's talking about within a 40-mile range of Point Loma because that's where these guys who leave in the morning and come back in the evening are fishing. I'm talking the Grande, the Malahini, the Mission Bell, uh, all those guys. And they're all catching lots of Dorado. They're seeing a lot of bluefin, a lot of yellowfin tuna, and there's even hammerhead sharks swimming around. Mimi, unfortunately, donated half of her tuna to one of those hammerheads, as you can see there. Nasty thing, taking Mimi's fish. That's not nice. I could have used half of that fish for myself. Mimi would give it to me. That, she's that kind of person. Sean Hardigan, captain of the Mission Bell, saw that hammerhead, and he said, hmm, more tropical fish are on the way up here. Good sign, like that. Doesn't like the fact that the hammerhead chewed up Mimi's uh, big tuna, but he does see that as a sign 
of more great stuff to come, and I'm loving it. Liberty, Grande, San Diego, limits of drive. In fact, the Grande, I think, is working on day five today, and Scott Buchert is on board the Grande. So you know what that means? They're not going to catch anything at all. Just kidding. Scott, Scott's going to catch some fish, have some photos and video for all of us tomorrow, and I wish him the best of luck, and I wish the Grande the best of luck. They are doing really well, and they're within that 40-mile area. Now, you want to have fluorocarbon. You know we love Opsin fluorocarbon here, www.opsinusa.com. Put in FA at checkout. You get a love note from owner Greg Brown and a free gift. So 30 to 40 pound has been working really well. You want to have something with 25 pound in case you run into a finicky bite or a kelp where the Dorado are there, but they're not biting that well. Some guys will even drop down to 20 with a size 4 hook. But in most cases, in San Diego right now, man, I can hear all these foghorns just blaring. In most cases, you can use 30 to 40 pound floral, a really good hot bait, and a 2.0 size hook, and that will get it done for you. So that is fantastic. So that's that kind of closer area to Point Loma for you, kind of wrapped up. We talked to Ensenada, that steady flow is heading up this way. Blackfin tells us that. So we've got that going on, then we've got that kind of local San Diego bite. That's really excellent fishing right now. San Diego and Baja are definitely the places to be right now. But then you look down the pond even further and boats like the legend on a three-day trip tell us that we are still in the thick of this thing. Three-day trip on the legend. 228 on a yellowfin tuna. 180 on the Dorado. Six bluefin. And they had a fish or two that went up there around 200 pounds. Incidentally, the yellowfin tuna are mostly smaller fish. I want to call them like 8 to 20 pounds. There's a lot of that 8 to 12 pound fish. Bluefin around 40 in that local area with some bigger fish, as I just mentioned. And Dorado are okay. You know, they're decent fish. Probably a 8 pound average to the Dorado right now. You get a few bigger, a few smaller. So really nice fishing going on. Also, Condor, limits of yellowfin, limits of Dorado. Old Glory, limits of yellowfin, limits of Dorado. I'm telling you, there's a lot of fish flowing up. It's still great fishing in San Diego, and it doesn't seem to want to slow down. My good friend, Scott McDaniel. Scott, good morning to you. And Gary Bolin are putting a trip together on the Sea Adventure 80. 1.5 day trip, day and a half trip. Uh, includes all your meals, 475 bucks. You pay in cash, 430 bucks. A $30 fuel surcharge. It's leaving October the 4th, October the 4th. And if you want to get on, call Scott, 619-247-8971. I know it's hard to get on trips right now. There's one for you. I just thought I'd pass that along. San Diego looking super good right now, as you can hear. I love what's going on. All right, L.A. Orange County Dorado bite is in the toilet, as you know. It's just kind of right now. Not biting. Are the fish gone? You know, I, when I hear this 40-mile stuff going on out of San Diego, I feel like, our main body of fish may have slid down that way, and they're on that now, and they're out there hammering away consistently, getting limits early in the day. But on our live show last night, several people, trusted sources, chimed in on the live show. Remember, you can ask questions or contribute to the show. In fact, the Freeman Adventure family makes our live show so much better because they've got great information. Many of the guys, uh, some of them spear fishermen, have been out on the kelps, and they say the dodos are still here. Lots of flatheads on the kelps. They just got locked jaw. And that makes perfect sense with the wind because you're always going to get a drop in water temperature. Most of the time, you're going to get a drop in water temperature when you have wind like we've had. And that gives fish lock jaw. They go off the bite. So once this wind goes away, you get some solar warming. Now I've got faith that this might not be over. It might be over. But it might not, and I base that on what all these guys are telling me, that they're still seeing fish. In fact, um, guys from Newport Landing telling me the same thing. James Mosier, great guy. James, good morning to you. Playing our show down there at Newport Landing on many of the mornings. James says, Phil, they're still here. They've got lockjaw. So I like that. And James, by the way, is out for 10 days. He'll be coming back and forth out of Newport Landing. But they are out there fishing rockfish trying to ascertain the health of the rockfish fishery. He's doing important work 
He's doing really important work because so many of the limits and everything else will be based on what they see out there, their observations. And James will be sharing those observations with us both verbally and in video and photos. So can't wait to get some more of that information. So, all right, that's what's going on here. Channel Islands, there's been some offshore stuff up there also, but here recently, that's been in the kaput also because we've got too much wind up there. All right, Islands, Tolos Santos, a few yellows down there off Ensenada. There's been some pretty good yellowtail fishing down there, as a matter of fact, surface iron and fly line bait. Coronado Island still has yellowtail and bass and, you know, a few barracuda wandering around there. San Clemente Island, we have seen some really outstanding yellow fishing going on. A fly line bait, 25 pound, 2 0 hook, really good hot bait. The uh, Freedom the other day was pushing 100 forkies. Uh, the Thunderbird has had magnificent days. This wind seems to be taking a little bit of a toll on it right now. Thunderbird on their last trip had only 11 yellowtail. They dumped a lot of fish, however. You got the sea lion problem over there, but you also had structure and kelp, and uh, it just seemed to really get in the way. Let's put it that way. Especially if you're fishing 25 pound, hard to put the brakes on these. Mostly 15 to 20 pound yellows, but a few bigger models in there also. So there's been some really nice big fish at San Clemente Island. Catalina, not bad. I talked to a bunch of guys getting off the native sun yesterday. The previous day, they had really wide open bonita fishing at 84 calico bass. Yesterday, it slowed down, um, but there was still that bonita action. Small bonita, but good action. Bass, whitefish, and sheep's head on the bottom. Not that bad. You know, there's enough action to make it worth your while. And then Channel Island's windy, but pretty good rock fishing up there when that wind gets out of the picture as it should here pretty soon I think you're going to see some really excellent really really excellent rock fishing with an occasional flurry on white sea bass and an occasional flurry on halibut up there I shouldn't say flurry on the halibut a few halibut flurries on the sea bass like 10 12 15 sometimes even better than that and my god you know we've been catching sea bass off and on all year long earlier in the year it was absolutely crazy up there just as good as you could possibly want it. Now, we're almost to the point where they're gonna start seeing squid up there again, and we're gonna run this sea bass. It's gonna become an annual thing. It's gonna run into the next season here, if we're not careful. Let's keep our fingers crossed that that is indeed the case. Incidentally, Ventura sword fishing, what better place to fish? 805 676 3474. Just a great place to fish. I love it up there. Um, uh, along the coast, uh, a few big yellows down there out of San Diego occasionally, uh, sculping rockfish for most of the areas right now with a few uh, boats hammering out some okay catches on calico bass, a few sand bass. That's all structured fish right now. And in the surf, we are continuing to see some pretty good corvina fishing and also an occasional halibut, lucky crafts. I like those chrome crocodiles, three quarter ounce. That works really, really well also. And uh, some yellow pin croaker. You can make some extraordinary catches in the surf in Southern California. There have been days where we've had 70, 80 fish, and it's full speed throwing the iron. Eddie Leland and I and my kids and a bunch of other friends, we've had some extraordinary days here in the Southern California coast, and that is a nice way for me to segue into. I'll be doing guided trips here. Not sure when they're going to start, uh, but pretty soon. But if you'd like to get on the list, and I'm just going to put your name on a list, and then when we open up our guided surf fishing trips, I'll send you information. Just send me a text at 657-227-6459, and we'll get you on that list, and I'll send you the info, and we'll meet for a day of surf fishing. Maybe we'll catch them, maybe we won't, but we'll have a great time together. I'll guarantee you that. If you could take the time to give us a like, it means so much to us here at Friedman Adventures, starting to move toward 1 million views, and we owe that all to you. We're going to have a little party down at 22nd Street Landing when we do it, and you're invited. Come on down and have a piece of cake or a cup of coffee or whatever else you, it is you imbibe in. We'll have a really good time, but we can't thank you enough, and smashing that like button really helps us a lot. All right, it's been good spending some time with you. Should I grab my coffee one more time? Yeah, well, can I? Is that okay? Let me grab it and toast you all goodbye because there's nothing like a cup of coffee on a cold, foggy Southern California morning where fishing is anything but cold and foggy. Take care of my friends. Always good to be with you. Have 
a wonderful day. And thanks for taking some time to spend with me.